As a business owner or as a leader, there's so many things that we're responsible for to help our organizations be successful. We have our strategic plan and we have our business plan and we have our operation plan. The question I have for you today as a leader is what is your culture plan? Do you truly have a plan to develop closer relationships with your employees? Gallup says that only one in three employees is truly engaged today. Relationships with employees come as a result of intentionally designed cultures. The most strategic thing that we can do as leaders is to intentionally design outstanding cultures. 20 years ago, I was miserable. I was in a job that I hated. At first, I thought it was just because my big, bubbling, outgoing, fun personality was just too big to fit into that rigid design cubicle that engineers are supposed to live in. And then I realized it was more than that. It was the culture that I worked in. When I first got there, I was excited. I was excited to meet my new boss. He was the area manager over all of the people in our office. So a week went by, and then two weeks went by, and then three weeks went by, and I'm thinking, come on, like I'm a bright, accomplished engineer. Like I'm adding a lot to the organization. Why wouldn't he care enough to at least come by and say hello? Three months later, I finally met him, and I learned he may be a really good engineer, but he could care less about his people. It killed me how there was so much potential in our organization, not just me, but the other employees that worked there, my friends that worked there, there was so much potential, and he didn't care. I got to the point where I was just miserable, and I thought, I can't stand here anymore. So I started to think, what am I going to do to get out of here? I started to think about it. I started to talk about it, and I even had dreams about it. How can I leave? And finally, one day, I mustered up my courage, and I walked into my boss's office, and he asked me to sit down, and I sat down, and I said, I've decided that I'm going to leave, and I'm not going to find another job, but I actually decided that I'm going to be a consultant. I'm going to hang out my shingle, start my own business, and be a consultant. Well, what my boss did next surprised me. He walked over, and he shut the door. And then he started pointing his finger, and he said, you have no idea how hard it will be to be a consultant. I've actually tried to be a consultant, and I didn't make it. And I promise you, if I can't make it, there is no way in the world that you will make it. <laughs> I was shocked. It wasn't what I was expecting. I thanked him for his time. I thanked him for the opportunities I'd had with that organization. And it had never felt so good to say goodbye. <laughs> I was so happy when I left there. I didn't know how to start a company. I had a degree in engineering. But one thing that I did know is I knew that I could create a culture, a culture where people would want to work, a culture where people would want to stay, and I would create that culture by design. Every single company that I have worked with this year has two concerns. How can I recruit and how can I retain quality employees? Creating cultures by design, not default, is the answer to that question. In the engineering and construction world, typical projects, we have design engineers that design them, and then they go out to bid, and the contractors come, and they build them. So they call them design, bid, build. Well, there is another method that we use sometimes called design, build. In design, build, the engineer design team and the contractor who wants to build it, they actually come together and they collaborate. And they create what we call a design, build team. As you can imagine, there's so many benefits that come from a design, build culture because there's more collaboration, we're getting more value. A lot of times projects get done faster. And as I started to think about this design-build environment, 
I thought that's exactly what we need in our cultures. We need to design them intentionally, and we need to do it in a way that we build our people. I've learned from the design-build cultures there's three things that really make the difference. The first one is communication. Imagine the communication that happens when the designer and the builder are actually housed in the same office. Every single day, they're in there collaborating and communicating together. What can you do in your culture to improve the communication? One of the clients that I have, they have hundreds of employees. On Monday morning, after they have their leadership team meeting, they take turns on the leadership team making a video that is then instantly streamed to every one of their hundreds of employees. It tells them what projects they want, it incorporates the values of the company, it helps them understand the culture, and they're communicating that no matter where their employees are at. The second thing is that in a design-build project, we have closer relationships. Like I said, those design builders, they're physically close together. And we have more opportunities to have closer relationships. I have four children. When my kids were little, there was always this fight for mom time. Do you know how that goes? So we came up with this solution, and we called it 100% time. And it would rotate, and each day, one child would get 15 minutes of 100% time with mom. And we could jump on the trampoline, we could go for a walk, we could do whatever they wanted for 15 minutes. When is the last time you spent 15 minutes of undivided attention with one of your employees? Just to ask them, how are they doing? What's important to them? How could you help their life be better? And the third one is consistently asking for feedback. In this design-build collaboration, there's feedback going on all the time. In our cultures, we talk so much about having safe cultures. Physically, what about emotionally? Are there an emotionally safe place where we're getting feedback, asking people for their ideas, figuring out how we can get better at what we do? These three things will change your culture. The most strategic thing we can do as leaders is to intentionally create outstanding cultures by design. Now for the rest of the story. I didn't have to go back to that job. I built a multi-million dollar consulting firm, and guess who one of my clients is? Yes, that organization. Oh